My name is Tamanda. Again, came with new episode as per commitment in previous episode, Theory of Special Relativity Part 2. If you are directly watching my video, please watch the previous episode, Theory of Special Relativity Part 1, for easy understanding. Please subscribe, like, and share my video. Your support will be my inspiration. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Choice is your. The famous quote of Great Einstein. Einstein's special relativity based on two postulates. First postulate. The laws of physics take the same form in all inertial frames of reference. Second postulate, the speed of light in free space has the same value in all inertial frames of reference. Or we can say, as measured in any inertial frame of reference, light is always propagated in empty space with a definite velocity c. That is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. And its most important consequence is time dilation. And its further is called as velocity time dilation. Velocity time dilation is one of the outcomes of second postulate special relativity. That is speed of light in all reference frames is same. Means it is not possible to make the speed of light appear greater by moving towards or away from the light source. And time moves relative to the observer. Simply, if an object in motion experiences time dilution, which means that time became slow when one is moving or everybody have their personal time. Let us understand time dilution with an experiment which is called mirror experiment. Suppose a spaceship have two mirrors, A and B, in rest, and a light pulse is bouncing between them, and the spaceship is in rest. The observers in both in spaceship and out of the spaceship watching the same bounce of light pulser at a straight line from top to bottom. Suppose the distance between two mirrors is 3 meter and let the speed of light also 3 meter per second instead of 3 lakh kilometer per second for easy understanding. The light will take 1 second to reach from bottom mirror to top mirror. Suppose the spaceship start to motion, then both mirrors will be in motion. Then according to relativity, the observer inside the spaceship will see the light is moving at a straight line. But what an observer outside the spaceship will see? He will see the light moving at a diagonal path. We knew the speed of light constant for all inertial observers. Then to achieve more distance at same speed, time has to slow down because distance equals speed multiplied by time. If distance increase, then passing of time have to increase. We can also find exert time daily of a moving object by applying Pythagorean theorem. A practical examples of time dilution is an international space station which orbits Earth at a speed of about 7,700 meter per second, time goes slower, lagging 0.007 seconds behind Earth time in every six months. For a larger effects are seen with elementary particles moving at speeds close to that of light. One such experiment involved muons. The muon is an elementary particle similar to the electron, which is created by cosmic rays in Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 9 km or 30,000 feet. 
At 99.8% of the speed of light, the muons should reach sea level in 31 microseconds. But measurements show that it took only 2 Earth microseconds. The reason is time dilution. The second consequence is land contraction. Land contraction means an object contract when it moves. The Lorentz transform allow us to calculate the land contraction. How much contraction occurs is depend on how fast an object is traveling with respect to the observer. To understand it, assume that an object having a length 200 feet, moving at a rate of 86.5% the speed of light, passed to an observer. The observer would measure the object to be 100 feet long. And at 99%, the speed of light at length will observe 28 feet. And at 99.99%, speed of light its length will be 3 feet. We should keep in mind that all measurements are in the direction of the motion and height will be same. Einstein gave a formula for time dilution and length contraction. Outcome of all experiments exactly match to Einstein formula. Third consequence is relativistic mass. Relativistic mass refers to mass of a body which change with the speed of the body as this speed approaches close to speed of light. It increases with velocity and tends to infinity when the velocity approaches the speed of light. Relativistic mass equals rest mass by square root of 1 minus velocity by speed of light squared. The equation is mr equal m0 by square root of 1 minus v square by c square, where mr is relativistic mass, m0 is rest mass, v is velocity, c is speed of light. The fourth consequence is mass energy equivalence. Mass energy equivalence is the principle that anything having mass has an equivalent amount of energy and vice versa. It means mass and energy are the same physical entity and can be changed into each other. In the equation, the increased relativistic mass m of a body times of the speed of light squared c square is equal to the kinetic energy e of that body that means the equivalent energy e can be calculated as the mass multiplied by the speed of light squared chemical reactions nuclear reactions and other energy transformations may cause a system to lose some of its energy content to the environment and thus some corresponding mass releasing it as the radiant energy of light or as thermal energy. It found true in the case of nuclear fusion reactions that transfer hydrogen to helium in which 0.7% of the original rest energy of the hydrogen is converted to other forms of energy. Stars like the sun shine from the energy released from the rest energy of hydrogen atoms that are fused to form helium. Modern nuclear bombs like atom bomb, hydrogen bomb, Atomic power station are created from same formula. The fifth consequence is universal speed limit. We know the faster the velocity, the greater the time dilution between one another. If someone reach at speed of light, then time will be zero. That means if you achieve the speed of light, then for you, time will freeze. You can reach any part of the universe without spending time. Wow! 
And if the object's speed is more the speed of light, then time will be passed. But here is a twist. That is universal speed limit. Let us understand what universal speed limit is. Some insight comes from Einstein's comment that in relativity the limiting speed of light plays the role of an infinite speed. At infinite speed, light would travel any distance in zero time. Similarly, according to the relativistic equations, an observer riding a light wave would see lengths contract to zero and clocks stop ticking as the universe approached him at the speed of light. Effectively, relativity replaces an infinite speed limit with a finite value of 3 multiplied 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Another thing is, particles that have mass require energy to accelerate them. The closer to the speed of light you get a particle, the more energy is required to go faster. This is because the particles themselves get more massive in proportion to the increased velocity. In short, the faster you go, the heavier you get. Example, if you wanted to accelerate a single electron to light speed, you would need infinite amount energy due to the electron becoming infinitely heavy. There isn't enough energy in the entire universe to propel just a single electron to the speed of light. The most weird reality of universe was what Einstein formulate is his theory of special relativity was to visualize what the universe would look like from the per perspective of light which is basically a photon particle is. Einstein saw that life as a photon would be quite weird. For instance, suppose you were a photon. Time would have no meaning to you. Everything would appear to happen instantaneously. Imagine for a moment that a photon starts his journey at the very first moment of our universe, creating during the Big Bang. Before 13.6 billion years, from my perspective here on Earth, it took you exactly 13.6 billion years to travel from that point till you reached my retina. But from your perspective, one instant you were created and then the next. You are bouncing off or being observed by my eyeball. You experience no passage of time. Your birth and death happen instantaneously. This is because time slows for you as you get closer to the light speed and at it, it completely stops. That simple meaning that if you move at exactly the speed of light, you could go anywhere no matter how far, in exactly zero seconds. But same special relativity first postulate is, the laws of physics take the same form in all inertial frames of reference. That means time is like a frozen river, and what we're observing, passing of time, is just an illusion, the great secret of time final revealed. And I got my answer that I can go to future and no laws of physics will break. But Einstein was not happy to discover such a great law. He thought that special relativity works under constant speed, but the universe under the force which called gravity. How the relativity work and effect of gravity? He did 10 years of deep research and finally, on 25th November 1915, Einstein published a new theory called General Relativity, which became the key pillar in classical modern physics. To see the detail about General Relativity, please see my upcoming episode Time is an Illusion Part 6. Till now. 
Thanks for watching my video.